situation. Now I'm going to discuss how we would look for a new law. In general, we look for a new law by the following process. First, we guess it. <laughs> Th then we com Well, don't laugh. That's the really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guessed is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature. Or we say compared to experiment or experience, compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. <coughs> if it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. In that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make a difference how beautiful your guess is. It doesn't make a difference how smart you are who made the guess or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. If the process of computing the consequences is indefinite, then with a little skill, any experimental result can be made to look like a, an expected consequence. You're probably familiar with that in other fields. For example, A hates his mother. The reason is, of course, because she didn't caress him or love him enough uh, when he was a child. Actually, if you investigate, you find out that as a matter of fact, she, he did love him very much and everything was all right. Well, then, it's because she was overindulgent when he was a child. <laughs> so by having a vague theory, <laughs> it's possible to get either result. Oh, wait. Now, the cure for this one is the following. It would be possible to say, if it were possible to state ahead of time, how much love is not enough, and how much love is overindulgent exactly, and then there would be a perfectly legitimate theory against which you can make tests. It is usually said when this is pointed out, how much love is and so on, oh, you're dealing with psychological matters and things can't be defined so precisely. Yes, but then you can't claim to know anything about it. 